Hello and welcome to ConsoleTrading.com's video on Graname Basics in 3.2, Lesson 3. Uh, this is the third video in our, uh, our Basics series. The first two were created about a year ago in version 3.1.1. Uh, instead of continuing on in a now obsolete version, uh, uh, we are continuing on in 3.2.3, .3, which is the latest version available at the time of filming. Uh, if you're still using 3.1, nothing we showcase today will actually change. We, If we do touch on any 3.2 fixtures or features, I, don't in, I will recognize it and we'll move on. Uh, but I don't intend to be using any of 3.2's fixtures today. So... The gist is, essentially, we're back where we were. We've got our same show file. We're in 3.2. We've got uh, MA3D uh, version 3.2.3 .3, and on PC. Uh, we've got our normal setup. I've created the little view that we had, or we've actually imported the old show file from 3.1. And if you don't understand how we've got to where we are right now with the fixtures patched in, and all the presets. Uh, go back and watch lesson one and two. But let's begin. Today we're going to create a sequence. So we've got our fixture types, we've got two dimmers, we've got some Mac 250s, and we've got some 101s, some just little lead head movers. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do something that I used to do a lot and still do, which is corporate room looks. So, you know, a bit of color in the room and a bit of rotating gobo. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our 250s and we're going to create a position preset. So we're going to turn them on by going to command overlay, which is exactly the same as the command section found on the command screen. Uh, and we're going to go, we're just going to bring them out to 100%. So to do that, we go, we select our group, or we can type in our fixture numbers, which would be fixture 251 through 254. Then press at full, or you can just press the at key twice, and it brings them up to 100%. Then we select position, and we go to our command view to give the encoders, and we're just going to create a little bit of a position here. So... We're also going to go through the highlight and solo function. So if you're dealing with a bunch of moving lights, you've got them selected currently, and you want to know which one you're dealing with, if you put them in a color, such as yellow, and then press the highlight key, and just press the next and previous buttons, you can go through and see which fix you're using and which one you're manipulating. There's also a solo button, which will turn everything else off, if it's running from the program or, or playback, it doesn't matter, and you can just deal with it like that. It's a great feature to have unless you're programming with a room full of people. So we're going to use the highlight mode currently, and then we're actually going to select all three, four fixtures. So I'm going to go 251 through 254, and we're going to use the align function. So up here we can see that there's something that says align. If we click this a couple of times and then drag out pan value, we can see that we can align our fixtures in and just create a nice little crossover like so. And then we're going to call this a position. So we're going to click style. I'm going to click in a position preset. We're going to call it number one. And if I start typing right now, it's going to put it in. So if I type, you know, stage cover, or we'll call it stage wash, we've got a nice little stage wash there. If we wanted to manually manipulate the fixtures, we can drop it into highlight mode, and with the first select fixture selected, I would just now go into my pan, and I just, you know, make my fine adjustments as required. But I'm happy with the position it's already done. So we're going to clear our programmer, and we're going to do the same thing with our 101s. I apologize it's been such a long time since we created a video uh, for the basic series. It's, you know, it's just been a busy time of the year. But it's a busy time for everyone and we all want to learn MA. We all want to learn a new skill by Christmas. There's nothing wrong with learning a new skill before Christmas. 
especially for those buying uh, MA hardware. Now I don't have, I, I do own a command wing, MA command wing, but I don't have it set up today because I figured if I do it, if I do all the setup on the encoders with the mouse, it'll work for all users. If you've got a command wing, you know that these four encoder wheels across the top are your four encoder wheels on your desk. If not, now you do. So, we've set up our, once again, our aligned little wash thing. If we click store and we click on a position preset, it's going to give us three options. Do we want to override it, which would delete the position values that we just put in for the 250s? Do we want to merge it, which just adds in on top of the other information, or do we want to remove it? We want to merge it, but I'll explain remove while we're here as well. If we, for example, created a position preset, so let us let me merge it, I'll, I'll do it for you visually. So as we can see, if we recall, if we go to our 101s and our 250s and we click stage wash, we can see we get that position. If I copy that preset, by clicking copy and then clicking a preset, I've now created a duplicate preset that's exactly the same as the first. But with this one, what I want to do is I want to put those fixtures into that position and if I click store and click on it and click remove and then clear out, when we recall that position it's now just for the fixtures that I didn't remove it from. That's the remove function. So it's fantastic if you've accidentally put information into a palette or a group that you don't want. You can literally reverse the process by storing over the top and saying this information that I've got in the programmer I don't want to see it here anymore. So we'll delete that second stage wash preset and we'll start. So we'll grab 101s, we'll go stage wash and wait I want to put them in blue but we're going to notice that all the auto colors that we created before the only ones that I can use are the ones that have got the little green lines on them. If it's got a yellow line, it means some of the fixtures we've got selected can use it. But we need a couple of these color presets. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our special dialog and we're going to create a red one. And in the same way that we merged across the top of our position data, we're going to merge across our red one. And then we're going to go to the blue one, manually tweak that, and we're going to merge across the top of the blue one. If you don't like this method, what you can do is you can separate them out as you want, but I normally try to unite my color palette so that I can grab all my fixtures in the rig at once and I can put them all in the same colour. Obviously a Mac 250 is blue and an LED blue are very different so you're going to have to tweak them. Now I'm teaching you uh, palettes simply because I'm trying to teach good behaviour. What I could do is I could say don't worry about it just grab all your fixtures you know let's you know grab all our fixtures And with MA, if I go to the color thing and I go to the special dialog and I say I want blue, it tries to match the blue with the color wheel fixture as closely as possible. So you can see it struggles with, you know, your purples and stuff. And then I can click store and store it to a sequence and that's great and lovely. But these are what's called hard values and hard values are not good because when we come to update things, I would have to update every single position in the show file where that is. If we do it with presets, especially with position presets, what we can go back and do is we can just recall these position presets and we can update those and then that will track through everywhere where we've used that, I bumped the microphone, I'm sorry, everywhere where we've used that position preset. It'll become clear in a moment, but I just wanted to explain the, uh, the process and why we use presets. So we'll set up our little uh, little view, we'll go there, we'll go to our uh, gobos, we'll grab, we'll come out of actually our, our uh, preset, our gobo preset here, we'll grab our dots, we'll go to beam, 
scroll down a bit and we're looking for the three facet prism lovely and as you can see I'm clicking on the top things instead of clicking on these so if I want gobo I can quickly just click on gobo if I want beam I can click on beam and I can go through all those values so I want gobo and I want a little bit of rotation on those So we can do it. That That's not a very good representation of a rotate. So we might rotate on the effect wheel. If it'll let me do it. Oh no, you can't rotate on the effect wheel on the uh, on these fixtures. So we'll have to rotate on the... Uh... There we go. We've got a gobo rotate. That doesn't look right to me. That looks... That's better. Let's just grab something we can actually kind of see. A decentral... Ah! That's the third beam I wanted. There we go. Because it's a decentralized beam, when we rotate it, it changes position. Which kind of looks cool. But I want triple beam. I want it to look like that. And I just want to slow it down a bit. And then we have that. And then I can select blue. Or what's a color that we can actually see? Probably yellow. And then we're going to grab our 101s. We're going to tell them to go into that stage wash position. Bring them up. And we want them in the blue that we created. The 108 blue. Lovely. Now if we select our two fixture types again. And we go store. And we click on an empty executor. We clear it. We've stored our first scene, which we in MA world call a queue, and we store those queues on an executor. Confused yet? Because I'm going to add another level. So when we click the record button and we store it to an empty executor or fader, as other desks call it, what we do is we also create a sequence. And a sequence is essentially your queue list. So we can rename our queue list. So if we go assign, assign, which is a quick way of bringing up label, we can just call this room book one. We've got that sequence. Now we can also move that sequence. So I can click move and put that on fader five. Or we can click on an empty spot and we can go to sequence and we can bring that sequence in from the pool. So you can have more sequences than you can have faders, essentially. By that method, if we wanted to, let's say, copy that or modify it, and we wanted to essentially suck that information out, we can either select all the fixtures, bring them into the programmer, or what we can do is we can copy this sequence, and we're going to rename this one as well. So I've clicked the assign button twice. We're going to call it room 2. And then we're going to assign room 2 to fader 2. So by doing that, I click in the top area. It gives me my assign options. We click sequence. We grab see, uh, room 2. And we bring that up. And that's an exact copy of the sequence. If we were to just go copy here to here, you can see that we've just copied sequence one. So we've told it, I want to copy sequence that uh, sequence one to fader six as well. So if we bring these up, they're exactly the same. They will actually overwrite themselves. We never want to do that. So with room two up, we want to edit it. So if we want to bring what we've done back into the programmer, we can click or type edit Q1 and we can click on the sequence or the executor and we can see now it's red. And if we look at our programmer, we can say everything's back in our programmer. So if we just were to select, let's say our 101s, we wanted them in red now and we wanted our 250s and we wanted them in a different gobo, so you know, maybe our chaotic purple one and we want them in white once we've done that we can click update and it's going to update 
Sequence 2, room 2, Q1. And when we clear it out, now we've got two room looks. We've got room look 1 and room look 2. That's storing to a sequence. In the next episode, we're going to tack on a couple of more cues and even look at tracking and moving blacks. Thank you for watching.